right, Al, we had uh, steak or the field last night for you at dinner. I was told Vegas took steak off the board. Uh, yeah, I have to admit, I had a steak when I got here on <laughs> Monday night. And, you know, we went to an Italian-slash-American uh, steakhouse last night. Very good. Uh, right down the street from the hotel. But I, I couldn't resist. And, you know, you see that big old yep. New York uh, glaring at you, the picture of it on the, you know, on the menu. And, uh, you know, I had to go in that direction. But maybe fish tonight, I think. Well, where are we eating tonight? Uh, tonight we're, we're uncertain because we have to go down to Providence from Boston and meet with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the late afternoon. And by the time I get back to Boston, uh, I may be stuck at like Arby's or whatever's open at 11 o'clock. Oh, but then I might not have dinner with you. I'm going up for rehearsal this afternoon. Yeah. And then hopefully we're back and ready to go by six o'clock well, or so. You've got you guys have the the cushy job. Oh, I mean, we're, we're sitting there. I mean, you're doing the pregame show. You got teleprompters. You got the oh, whole thing. You got Rodney. Man. and You've got Tony. I was with both of them last night. You know, you got Bob, Bullet Bob. You know, Bob is Bob is still asleep. By the way, you know, Bob's got a, Bob doesn't get up till about eleven o'clock. So uh, you got you got a great gig going, man. A great one. All right. Um, how much of Spygate Deflate Gate will factor into the broadcast tomorrow? Well, a little bit, but I mean, by the time we get on the air, it's it, this has been going on for seven months. You guys are going to deal with it, you know, in your portion of the show. And I think at a certain point, it was almost like the Super Bowl, where, yeah, it's there. It's not the big elephant in the room anymore. Uh, people are tired of it. If we can add something, if there's something new, we'll talk about it. But just to start talking about it, uh, people are sick of it, I think, for the most part. That's that's my feeling. And uh, unless we, we can, as I say, uh, bring some something new to the table, maybe a different perspective, you know, we had a chance to talk to uh, a couple of the players yesterday and maybe talk about how, how they've reacted to it. And you can imagine, I mean, Belichick's pretty good at getting these guys focused on, uh, you know, as he says, it's on to whatever team it's on to. And this week, obviously, it's Pittsburgh. So there's not a lot of rehashing. This is a team that they've been trained, like a lot of teams these days, Dan. It's not about the past. It's about what's coming up. And, uh, you know, you look at the... Uh, you know, you looked at the hard knocks with with the uh, Texans, the you know the current series that's playing uh, you know in the camp of the Houston Texans, and you know one of the things I found to be really interesting is that Bill O'Brien was up there, the head coach, telling them how to deal with the media. They're all the same. The yeah. coaches are all saying the same thing: Don't go back, go ahead. I just I'm just working hard. I'm trying to be the better player. I want this team to win. Blah 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 blah. Was hard knocks good for JJ Watt? I think so. Yeah, I mean, he came across as a, a very likable guy, and he is. I mean, you know him, and he really is a very, very good guy. Um, yeah, I think people came away with a, a pretty positive impression of him. He's he's special. He's special, and as long as you know he keeps up the caliber of play to the extent that he has, uh, you know, he's what ranked as the number one defensive player in the league. Some polls have him as the best player in the National Football League. I would say, on balance, it was. Yeah. Who do you think's the most popular player in the league? Not known, but popular. Well, these days, when somebody gets really popular, you know there's always going to be blowback. Oh, well, that guy's not as good as uh, as everybody thinks he is. So, all, so a guy can ascend, like a J.J. Watt can ascend. I mean, a couple of years ago, it was Robert Griffin. It was Colin Kaepernick. And then all of a sudden, everybody says, oh, wait a second. I see the flaws. I see the warts. And, of course, with RG, we, it's a whole other thing right now, even with Kaepernick. But all of a sudden, you know, a, a guy a guy blossoms, and you love him, and say, oh, this guy has fantastic, great personality, wonderful guy, engaging smile, plays great. And then all of a sudden, everybody looks for the, uh, for the seamy side, the underside. They haven't really done that with Watt yet, but, I mean, I, I think it's a movable feast as to w- which player is the most popular in the league. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> Peyton Manning still has a lot of naysayers, and everybody says, oh, you know, he's only won one Super Bowl, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I would suggest that Peyton's as popular as anybody in the league. He's Al Michaels, the five-time Emmy winner for Outstanding Sports Personality. He'll have Thursday night's game. He'll have Sunday night's game with the Cowboys and the Giants. Should the commissioner be there? Tomorrow night? Will he be there? No. Should he be there? Should he be there? No. Because uh, that's that's not a scene. Look, on a number of levels, he doesn't have to be there. I know it's sort of tradition for Roger Goodell to show up. But under these circumstances, 
I think everybody's just sick of this, and they want they want to get back to the game itself, football. And that would be, you know, I mean, what would you do with them if you if you brought them there? Hide them. So yeah. even if you brought him there or Roger came to the game, he's not going to sit in the stands as he did during the playoff game against Baltimore last year. So forget that. He's not going to sit in the owner's box, <laughs> not, certainly not, not tomorrow night <laughs> in, in either owner's box. And so what do you do with him? Uh, you know, you, you, you can't. And, and if people knew he was there, it would, you know, it would create this whole thing and the detract the, the from the game. So under this particular circumstance, I think they made the right choice. Clear this up. My uh, my I team, well, basically Paulie yes. said that uh, he was checking with sources who were checking with sources who were checking with Chris Mortensen that yeah. you <laughs> have a full meal there during the game. Uh, no, somehow that got out. That's not true. I, I, I eat, you know, a couple of hours before the game. I, I don't sit there with a full meal. I have a snack cup, which often contains grapes and junior mints. So it's that it's that you know it's that uh, grape it's that uh, uh, green grape and small junior mint combination, which of course is, has become a very popular dish in, in you know my, my neck of the woods. <laughs> and that's you know that that just gives me enough uh, you know juice, I guess. Is that considered a cleanse for Al Michaels? A cleanse? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the junior mints part certainly. <laughs> I I've been just eating fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And it's not any fun. Well, fruits are good. I, I, you know, I do you know I don't eat vegetables. But, I know, but for, but I think you know fruits can get you. What do you like? Do you like? Uh, I'm just looking at a uh, a banana in a bowl right now. Yeah. You're, you're making me hungry. Oh, you know what? Especially these days, pears are just fantastic, aren't they? <laughs> I just pears, bananas, grapes. Why don't you do a steak show on the Food Channel? Well, what am I supposed you know, put, what, put a steak on a barbecue? Yeah, how long do you think that would last? No, you have different ways to prepare a steak. But I don't. The problem is <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I put the barbecue on. Normally Linda does it anyway. She'll, you know, she, she's making the steak. And, I, you know, I, she, she, she does the cooking. I mean, she's uh, what Parcells wanted to be, you know, uh, bring, bring some of the groceries and cooks them too. And I just, you know, get that knife and fork and... You know, I have to admit, though, too, Dan, I mean, ke- you know, ketchup is still fantastic with steak. <laughs> you know, you walk into a good restaurant, and, you know, you have, you know so, and the, the chef comes by and the whole thing, and I always have to sneak a little bottle of uh, a little Heinz. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I've got to hear that thing pop. Like, you don't want to walk into a restaurant and have them bring you a bottle of Heinz, and you know it's been opened, and some kids put, like, 12 French fries in it. So it's very important to me to hear that boop. <laughs> Uh, in the final thirty seconds, all quiet on the L.A. front here. You got an update? On- oh God, no, no. I mean, it's it, it, it's it just keeps going on. There's a meeting, I think, next week. It might even yeah, this coming week, I believe. Another committee meeting. But I thought there was a fascinating story. You should pick up the L.A. Times yesterday, a front-page story about the mayor of Carson, you know, where they're trying to build yeah. the, uh, the... The mayor of Carson, they're not even sure he lives in Carson. They're not sure where he lives. <laughs> but it, it was a big front-page piece. So, I mean, no matter where you look, I mean, you got the flight gate, you got you got the whole thing. It'll be great to actually have the ball in the air uh, for the kickoff tomorrow night. I'll see you t- uh, a little bit later on. I will see you later on. All right, bud. Take it. That's Al Michaels, voice of uh, Sunday Night Football and Thursday Night Football.